Today we return to one of my favorite series, Hello Fellow Podcasters. It is Iron the Podcaster, and today we got Rangers Apprentice, the Royal Ranger, the Missing Prince by John Flanagan. And well, let's get right on to it. So let's first get on with a small plot summary. The Prince of Galica is missing, and the King of Galica asks King Duncan, the King of Aralwyn, for help. Duncan knows that if he sends an army or direct help to help. Free the prince of Galica, who is currently trapped at this place where Baron Lazigny has apparently kidnapped the prince. And Duncan knows that if he sends a direct army or something like that, it'll result in a war with Galica, and that will not be good. Therefore, he says, "Okay, we can send my two rangers." So Will and Maddie are summoned, and they are chosen for the mission. They are going to going to pose as a father and a daughter. Both junglers. Maddie is going to pose as an expert knife thrower, which she already is, just a showman this time as well. And she also practiced juggling a little bit, and that should also somewhat help. Then Will. Will is going to be the bard. He's gonna play his beautiful mandolin, make beautiful songs, and he has a decent singing voice, so he should be able to get along. So they go through Galica slowly, going through different towns so that they can avoid suspicion and make it to the castle, where they manage to get an audience with the king. And finally, after going up to the king, he gives the king a small little little thing that shows them, okay, we are the guys from Raluan. And the king gives them the info. Nothing's changed. Baron Lazegni is still keeping my son hostage. And so Will and Maddie. Go on ahead and go through their usual route of going through villages and getting some money, you know, as a cover, and they go towards the, the nice, beautiful, annoying place where Falais actually, where the prince is being kept. On the way, they do get robbed once, but you know, we're rangers. We beat the crap out of them and get back the money, and then we go to the. Felice, which is I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that is where currently the prince is being held. There, they they kind of trip down and rip down their jungler clothes to be more tattered and dirty, so that they may seem more more you know less level, lower level performance, and they perform for the castle staff, and they get a moderately decent amount of money as well. There, while Mewil is constantly distracting the audience, Maddie goes on ahead and scouts out where the prince is and finds out he is on top of one of the towers of the castle. Meanwhile, the Baron is acting quite suspicious, and he orders a performance from the junglers for to his one of his dinners, his royal dinners or whatever, and that happens. And there, the Baron is being increasingly suspicious of the two junglers. And finally, since the Baron seems to be being suspicious, and Will and Maddie wants to get out of there as soon as possible, they make up some nice, a nice little plan. They go in to the to the tower unseen. They go up, and finally, after climbing up, they manage to grab the prince. And they're about to go out when the Baron comes in and says, "I got you. Put them in a dungeon." And that is the end of the plot. So about the writing technique, I would like to comment on that a little bit. It's quite straightforward and narration based. This is kind of what I noticed after you know I actually learned how to write, and it makes the action and everything that is going on very straightforward, very punchy, very interesting. However, some of the plot twists could be better executed. For example, less obvious clues or, or more subtle touches. Like for example, the Baron Lazigny being suspicious was good. Like it's good, but. There could have been a subtle touch where he seems to be suspicious, and we don't—we're not sure if he knows or not. We just got that he's being weird, but we're not sure if that's his base personality. There, there needs to be a very strange balance between I'm telling the reader what I want them to feel, and also I'm making sure the reader is not completely sure that what I'm telling them is what I'm telling them. And John Flanagan is kind of. The writing feels a little bit, a、eh, little bit, a little bit. It could be a little bit better, like. Could be a little bit more tilted towards this is really sus and we should be kind of scared and kind of excited. And I think I thought that would make it better. However, again, this narration business helps bring back some of the nostalgia of the characters, such as the way that Will thinks, the way that Maddie thinks, the way they fight, with the way they talk. The narration based and the fact that we、uh, 
since this is an omniscient, omniscient writer's view, we keep switching in between the character's thoughts and dialogue, and it, we can do that quite quickly, very efficiently, and that helps us bring the nostalgia and the strongness of the character together. Because each, we know each of the character designs perfectly. The double sheath with the sacks and the throwing knives, the green cloak that models in and goes and blends into the rest. We know these rangers very, very well, even when they are in their jungler outfits. Therefore, even when the narration is pretty straightforward and there's not a lot of description, we can know what the characters are doing pretty, pretty well, and that kind of makes up for it. However, again, I, I would like to see a little bit more description and a little bit more subtleness to the way that the plot twists are executed, and I, I saw that would bring, not like, knock up the book several levels higher, and that's just my comment. Of course, I'm not an expert, I'm just looking at it and just this is just my opinion. There's there's really no way to it. It's an awesome book just as it is. And what I think about the book, I think the book was awesome. I loved the pacing. The pacing was really, really good. It had a really good mix of the nostalgia of these characters that we love. We've seen for 14, 15, over 10 books and the way they fight and the familiar saying of the longbows and the expert throwing knives and the slash of the sacks. You know, it's, it's always nice. It's always nice. It brings back some of the old memories from the older books and it really, really helps with the book's pacing as well and really loved the plot. And another risky rescue mission, you know, is it gonna happen? Are we gonna fail? What's gonna happen? And the nice little cliffhanger at the end was also a great topper. I would give this book an easy 8 out of 10. It was a great book, but like I just said, it could be an easy 10 out of 10 if the descriptions and some of the plot twist executions were a little bit more subtle and a little bit more poking towards the reader and make us a little bit more intrigued. And I thought that would boost up the book a lot more. Of course, there is also the uh, element which we might we, we need to consider, which is it makes it a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to read and a lot, a lot we don't need to think as much. However, I think a little bit more thinking perhaps is required for this particular book. And like always, your plot cruster and the plot cruster. It is an awesome book, highly recommend the entire series. You will have fun with reading every second of it. And I promise you, even though I have said it could be better, that doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, I dare you. I don't believe there'll be a moment you're bored. Have a great day, everybody.